Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is vacuum circuits. Our objective is to examine vacuums in pneumatic systems. We'll discuss how vacuum conditions are measured, how vacuum is generated, and lastly, how vacuum is employed. Viewers are no doubt aware there exist two conditions of measuring pressure. Relative to the surface of the earth, a gauge measurement, or relative to the vacuum of space, an absolute measurement. The easiest way to compare and contrast these two systems is to place the absolute and gauge scale side by side. The absolute scale begins at vacuum conditions at 0 psi absolute, whereas the gauge scale begins at atmospheric conditions. A reading of 0 psi gauge is therefore equivalent to 14.7 psi absolute. Unless explicitly stated otherwise, one can always assume all pressure measurements use the gauge scale. Pressures below 0 psi gauge or 14.7 psi absolute will be vacuum conditions, i.e. pressures less than atmospheric condition, the topic of today's lecture. Vacuums, spelled V-A-C, two U's, M, really suck and can be used in industrial settings to pull objects using the power of suction rather than to push them as would a linear acting cylinder. If the world was logical and efficient, one would just measure vacuum strength using these same scales. For example, if one aimed at center of mass of vacuum conditions, you could say this was 7.35 psi absolute. Or if one had strong effective for the gauge scale, one could say this same vacuum is negative 7.35 psi gauge. Either one of these two measurements would be a very workable means of measuring vacuum and wouldn't necessitate archaic or convoluted explanations. Understandable as this may be, it often doesn't work that way. Vacuum measurements use something totally archaic. And if that wasn't bad enough, they take an archaic measurement and flip it on its head. Allow me to demonstrate. Way back when people still wore powdered wigs and tights, some scientists by the name of Torricelli thought it'd be cool to fill a glass tube with a poisonous liquid metal mercury, known in those days as quicksilver or hydrogyrum, hence the symbol HG, and invert it in a bowl. He found that at atmospheric conditions, i.e. 14.7 psi absolute or 0 psi gauge, the atmosphere exerted enough force in the pool of mercury to push it roughly 30 inches high in the tube. 29.92 inches to be exact. If the atmosphere exerted more pressure, it forced the column of mercury higher, and if the atmosphere exerted less pressure, it draw the column of mercury lower. This is largely the working principle of a barometer, a device that measures subtle fluctuations in atmospheric pressure used to predict sunny days, rainy days, bomb cyclones, and mega droughts. Torricelli's setup also made a great way of measuring vacuum with atmospheric conditions as the upper bounds and perfect vacuum as the lower. At atmospheric conditions, i.e. 14.7 psi absolute or 0 psi gauge, the column of mercury was roughly 30 inches high. Theoretically, a perfect vacuum, i.e. 0 psi absolute or negative 14.7 psi gauge wouldn't support any mercury, giving us a lower bounds of 0 inches of mercury. Halfway up, i.e. 7.35 psi absolute, or if you had special affection for the gauge scale, negative 7.35 psi gauge, the atmosphere would support a column of mercury halfway up the tube, or roughly 15 inches. As archaic as this absolute height measurement is, you can see how it works, and you'd think people would just run with this, right? Wrong. Folks said, nuh-uh, that's still too easy. Let's take this unnecessary level of historical complication and really obfuscate it by standing it on his head. Thus, we have today's vacuum scale, where zero inches of mercury is atmospheric conditions and 30 inches of mercury a perfect vacuum. I should note, if you live in a country with a working government and a functional healthcare system, most likely the vacuum scale is specified in millimeters instead of inches, where zero millimeters of mercury is atmospheric conditions and 760 millimeters of mercury is a perfect vacuum. Stronger vacuums have higher readings. Weaker vacuums have lower readings. If you want to think of it this way, the vacuum scale is not reading the height of the column of mercury anymore, but rather how much mercury gets pulled out of the tube by vacuum conditions. Atmospheric conditions don't suck any of the mercury out of the 30 inch tube, thus it gets a vacuum scale reading of zero. A perfect vacuum in contrast sucks all 30 inches of mercury out of the 30 inch tube, thus it gets a vacuum scale reading of 30 inches. Unit conversion between gauge, absolute, absolute height, and vacuum scales is possible, but it's tricky. Now, before you say, forget this noise, I'ma just look this up on the internet, a word of caution about online conversion utilities. For the most part, these utilities are great for common units. However, some of them really suck, pardon the pun, with a vacuum scale, and will spit out units of absolute height when you're looking for vacuum scale, PSI gauge when you're looking for PSI absolute, and vice versa. 
Long story short, don't trust nobody, never. Trust yourself, trust the math. If you think about it, we're dealing with four linear scales. Gauge pressure that starts at atmospheric conditions and goes up as pressure goes up. Absolute pressure that starts at vacuum conditions, which also goes up as pressure goes up. Absolute height that also starts at vacuum conditions, which also goes up as pressure goes up. And finally, the vacuum scale, which starts at atmospheric conditions, however, goes up as pressure goes down. Let's say we've got 12 inches of vacuum expressed using the vacuum scale. We want to express the same value using the absolute scale. This takes a couple steps. Vacuum scale to absolute height scale, then absolute height scale to absolute pressure. To convert from the vacuum scale to absolute height scale, one needs to flip-flop the reading. 12 inches of vacuum means the 30-inch column of mercury moved down 12 inches, thus 30 minus 12 or 18 inches remains. Now it's just regular unit conversion, where 14.7 psi absolute is equal to 30 inches, 29.92 inches to be exact. The unit we want psi absolute is on top. The unit we don't want inches of mercury is on the bottom. The units we don't want cancels out. We're left with roughly 8.8 .8 psi absolute. If you wanted to keep going with this and express this using the gauge scale, you'd be below zero psi gauge or in negative territory, which makes a perfect sense because it's a vacuum, i.e. something less than atmosphere, where 8.8 .8 psi absolute is roughly equivalent to negative 5.9 psi gauge. We can also perform these conversions in reverse. Let's say we've got an absolute pressure of 4 psi absolute. And we want to express this less than atmospheric condition using the vacuum scale. Absolute pressure to absolute height is a simple unit conversion, where again, 14.7 psi absolute is equal to 30 inches, 29.92 inches to be exact. The unit we want, inches of mercury is on top. The unit we don't want, psi absolute is on the bottom. Units we don't want cancels out. We're left with roughly 8.1 inches of mercury expressed using the absolute height scale. Now flip-flop this to express the same value in the vacuum scale. An absolute height of 8.1 inches of mercury means the 30-inch glass tube has roughly 30 minus 8.1 or roughly 21.8 inches of empty space. Now I don't like this wonky conversion any more than you, but we are stuck with it. Matter of fact, I dislike these conversions so much, you most likely won't see these on a quiz or an exam. But you might see this. Which of these measurements is the strongest vacuum? Zero PSI gauge. 14.7 psi absolute, an absolute height rating of 29.92 inches of mercury, a vacuum scale rating of zero inches of mercury, a gauge rating of negative 14.7 psi gauge, an absolute reading of zero psi absolute, an absolute height rating of zero inches of mercury, a vacuum scale rating of 29.92 inches of mercury, and just to make it fun, negative 0.1 bars, 10 psi absolute, two inches of mercury in the absolute height scale, and 28.5 inches of mercury in the vacuum scale. Again, I'm not asking for numerical results or unit conversions. All I'm asking you is to get a general idea of what is and what is not a strong vacuum. If you're up to the challenge, think you could order this list weakest to strongest vacuum? By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results.